From Las Vegas, it's The Q. Covering EMC World 2016. Brought to you by EMC. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live at EMC World 2016. This is Silicon Angles, The Cube. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, Dave Vellante. Our next guest was Pal Palgi, who's the Vice President and General Manager of Scale.io at EMC. Cube alumni, welcome back to The Cube. Good to see you. Thank you, good In to see you. In town from Israel, what's going on? Scale.io, give us the update, because they're kind of in the map now. Yes. On the map, in the map. Absolutely. Emerging and core, or where they sit? ETD, emerging. Um, I think, uh, so first of all, we released uh, 2.0 a uh, couple of months uh, ago. A lot of uh, additional capabilities there, uh, security, uh, LDAP, uh, Active Directory integration, IPv6, um, uh, in-flight uh, checksum, which is uh, very important actually because we are running on the uh, application servers. Our checksum is straight from the I.O. leaving the application all the way down to the storage and back. Um, we have a lot of additional capabilities related to that, for example, uh, background scrubbing for silent corruption. Uh, basically, a lot of enterprise great capabilities have been adding added to the product. Um, it's uh, becoming a... What, what are yeah. some of the top use cases? Is it real time? Is it much more app integration? Where are you seeing scale I.O.? So our, our two main use cases that we see are infrastructure as a service. So um, public clouds, private clouds, um, and uh, databases. Um, so we see customers wanting the agility, high performance. Uh, Scala is the highest performance product uh, in the market today. Uh, scale, uh, elasticity, so the ability to add components, nodes, uh, move them, take them away, um, elimination of uh, uh, forklift upgrades. So with Scala, you never need to do a, a data migration project ever again. Um, actually, this morning, uh, one of our customers, uh, Citigroup, presented uh, how they are running Scale.io in their environment, and uh, Chris, their head of uh, storage engineering, uh, told that they are uh, doing an upgrade Tuesday afternoon. So no more night work, no more weekends. Um, yeah. With Scale.io, that's... Uh, so, Boaz, uh, for the people who might not be familiar with Scale.io, describe how it's different from like a traditional SAN system? So, so, so Scala is a software only enterprise class block storage device. Uh, what we do is we provide uh, uh, software components that you run either in a hyper-converged manner, so running the storage on the same server as uh, the applications or the hypervisors, or you can also run Scala in a two-layer architecture on commodity hardware, so compute, uh, on commodity servers and storage uh, on uh, commodity servers in a separate layer, or any mix and match uh, of, uh, of hyper-converged and two-layer. Uh, but in any case, so what we provide is a software only. Uh, we are agnostic to the underlying hardware. We run uh, on any hardware of the customer's choice. Uh, we run in uh, virtual environments uh, like ESX, Hyper-V, Zen, KVM, etc and on bare metal environments, Windows, all kinds of Linuxes, uh, Red Hat, Ubuntu, CoreOS, etc. So it's consistent with what you would expect with sort of, you know, everybody's talking about cloud native, modern architectures. I mean, this is essentially is a modern architecture. You're not buying a big storage box. Of course, the EMC sells a lot of big storage boxes. You're, <laughs> yeah. you're the disruptor inside are, of EMC, yes. which is kind of interesting, right? And yes, so it's a beautiful EMC, isn't it? So EMC understands where the market is going and is not afraid to disrupt themselves. And, and that's what we, are, uh, what we are doing. So yes, Scale.io is indeed a modern architecture. So you get all the uh, characteristics of modern architectures, commodity hardware, software only, scale out, uh, um, hardware independence, uh, flash, uh, 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 magnetic, media, etc. But 
we are a block device that enables customers to run traditional platform two applications and databases on a modern architecture, scale out, commodity based uh, architecture. And that's the beauty of uh, Scale.io. So in that respect, it's very similar to what Symmetrix did with EMC in the 90s. So in the 90s, the Symmetrix was at that time a client server enabling architecture that worked with the platform one mainframe, right? And, and bridged to the platform two. So similarly, Scale.io bridges platform two applications running to the platform three infrastructure. Well, the interesting thing about Symmetrics at the time was you had, you had a big box, it was consolidated, connected to mainframe or Unix or every different type. Remember the Unixes, there were 10 different flavors of Unix, right? Right. And Windows, whatever it was, and they, they supported everything yeah. and allowed that kind of consolidation to support these open client server apps. Yeah. What's the analog today for Scale.io? Is it these so-called cloud native apps, the DevOps environment, is that the analogous? I would Use say the, the, the analogy is that Scale.io enables you to take the um, platforms that you are used to work with today and the applications that you are used to work with today. So Linux, all kinds of Linuxes, Windows, uh, hypervisors like ESX and others, um, databases, Oracle, SAP HANA and so forth but to run them not in uh, traditional silos with dedicated storage arrays, fabric switches, HBA cards, etc., but to run them in a scale-out approach where you can benefit from the elasticity of commodity hardware, where you can regard your server nodes as commodity. You can add nodes on the fly, you can replace them on the fly, uh, you can grow as you go. Uh, Scala rebalances automatically as you add more nodes. So you get the flexibility and the elasticity of cloud native infrastructures and cloud native applications, but for both P2 and P3 type of applications. And you talk about high degrees of automation. I mean, this is the way, you, what you're describing is, a, is an observer would say, well, I guess this is how Facebook would do it, or, or this is how Amazon would do it, or Google would do it. Right. Um, but, but generally, for those organizations, you're thinking about a, a lot of file-oriented data, you know, but Scale.io is block-oriented data. Right. So what's the, what are the typical use cases? You mentioned City as an example. So there's obviously a lot of transactions going on in City. So, so it's not, so yeah, so, so City Group actually also presented this morning, and so it's not a secret. Or any use case of City Group that can run on Scale.io is going on to Scale.io. So, um, uh, City uh, obviously bought a lot of arrays, uh, traditional storage uh, boxes over the past uh, two decades from EMC. Today, uh, uh, environments that cannot run on Scale.io like AIX, uh, mainframe, are going onto uh, VMAXs and the like. Whatever can go onto Scale.io at City Group is going onto Scale.io. So IO. the modern apps are going to Scale.io. Modern apps and traditional platform okay. two apps, uh, Oracle, uh, uh, MongoDB, um, uh, for workload uh, ESX, performance, right? ESX uh, environments, big ESX environments. And why is that? Is it just performance, or is it performance? So they run better performance. It's cost. They they on the first deployment they already got sixty percent lower cost, uh, so six percent savings, better uh, performance. Um, uh, uh, more elasticity, operational yeah. ease. Uh, um, Not locked in, they can move it around, very versatile. Uh, uh, elimination of vendor hardware lock-in. Um, yeah. Yes. All right, so when a customer says, bottom line me, what's the bottom line for Scale.io? How would you describe it? Bottom line is get you all the enterprise class storage functionality that you are used to, plus uh, the flexibility and elasticity of commodity-based uh, hardware um, at a significantly lower cost and at a higher scale and higher performance than what you're used to. So, you know, we call it service and, right? You've seen our service and stuff, right. and, and we've been on this trend for a long, we predicted this a long, long time ago. We said, this just makes so much sense. However, having said that, the criticisms that we got at the time were, well, how are you going to, Protected. How are you going to bring enterprise class resiliency and recovery? 
And our, our answer was always, well, that's your problem. You're the technologist. So you've cracked that code, right? Or yeah, absolutely. Or cracking that. So talk about the stack that enables that resiliency. So, so, so we, the, the, the approach that we took in Scale.io is an approach where we are creating a meshed mirroring uh, high availability uh, layout where data is being spread across the, uh, the nodes in the platform and where we uh, are able to realize a very short rebuild time. So every storage system, every high availability is about mitigating the risk of outages. And so when you look at traditional systems, when you have a, a, a disk failure in the RAID, in the shelf, you have a rebuild time that might take several hours. And if during those hours you have another disk failure, you, you, you might lose access to your data or you might lose your data. When you look at Scale.io, our rebuild times are literally seconds. So if you have uh, just a simple uh, environment, 100 servers, each with one single uh, device of one terabyte and a 10 gigabit uh, network, if a server goes down, the rebuild time is 10 seconds instead of three, four hours. Right. So this means that if you don't have another outage within 10 seconds, you are again fully uh, protected. So your uh, enterprise class high availability with Scale.io is more than guaranteed. Yeah. Raid arrays weren't conceived in the day where there were you know, 20 terabyte drives on the horizon, so big difference. Yeah, okay, cool. So what's the landscape for the marketplace look like today? As emerging with cloud native becomes more and more relevant, yes. what are the top conversations that are you are having with customers? What we're seeing that customers want is they want uh, re resilience, they want uh, operational ease, elasticity, they want high performance, they want the scale because their data centers are consolidating and growing. They want hardware independence. Um, really, uh, software-only solutions, Scaleo is right where the customer uh, uh, wants to go. Noah, thanks for spending your time on theCUBE here. How many times do you come to the US from Israel a, a year? Once a month? About, uh, about once a month, once <laughs> every six weeks, yes. Well, so congratulations. I'm here regularly. Congratulations yes. on all your success. This is theCUBE here live at EMC World 2016. We are on the ground live for EMC World 2016. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. You're watching theCUBE. It's always fun to come back to theCUBE because you know, the, the discussion is always interesting